Hello, my name is Chris Mouflard. I'm a project engineer at Vigo Software. Welcome to the Schedule Planner video training series level 4. In this vignette, we're going to show you how to assign optimum crew compositions to tasks. Essentially, the aim of this vignette is to discuss why we would develop an optimal crew size and how we define that optimum crew composition to a task in Vico Schedule Planner. With Vico Schedule Planner locked and loaded, let's start by navigating to the Gantt chart view. The Gantt chart view is the most simple to define our supplier types because it is a clear list of all the activities which exist within the schedule. Let's start by double clicking on the layout piles task, heading to the suppliers dialog and selecting the new button. Add and, and double click to define our new supplier type. Click OK to save and we will now need to select OK to save our new entry and begin defining our remaining task. As we have already loaded the piling subcontractor, we can assign that supplier to each corresponding activity. As we continue through the list of tasks, we will have to add new suppliers where appropriate. The important first step of setting our suppliers will ensure that all of our resources are automatically assigned to that supplier type. If we didn't do this and decided later that we wanted to add suppliers, unfortunately, our newly added resources would not be linked accordingly. We can then head to the resources tab. We have the option here to update resources from quantities individually to every activity. This works because we have already linked each subcomponent to each task. Effectively, this means that we're able to find the resource component from the task manager based off the subcomponents which we assigned to the tasks previously. However, it's best to cancel out of this view and head to the resource registry and use the update resources from quantities, select all, select next, ensuring that the correct tasks are selected so that the resources may be assigned accordingly. Again, selecting next and closing. Note that we have now assigned our resources from the task manager to our corresponding tasks. Let's head back to the flow line view and double click on any activity. Head back to the resources tab. We are now given the option to begin defining our quantity of resources or the number of formwork carpenters that we might need within this crew and the production factor which corresponds to the speed in which this resource will be able to deliver this task. For instance, if we used a production factor of 0.5, it would take this formwork carpenter twice as long. However, if we used a production factor of 2, it would take him half the time. However, we know a production factor of 1 will be adequate. It is also good to know that when we are creating our optimum crew, we can also include resources in our crew composition that have no production factor. For example, let's create a new resource type. In this example, we know that we'll need one materials handler for every one carpenter. However, the materials handler is not actually contributing and driving the task, so we can give him a production factor of zero. Note that our duration was originally halved and now that we've set the production factor to zero because this materials handler is a non-value added resource, our duration remains the same. In this vignette we have shown you how to create optimal crew sizes to define tasks to help us create an effective plan. We have also shown you that the crew size comprises of a portion of the formula to calculate the overall duration in days and that the crew size and makeup are the keystones to balancing resources when we optimize a schedule.